companies got rich and the public got bamboozled. Yeah, the Sopranos theme. Uh, that can be now the New York State uh, official state song. What, what, what a mess. It was just a very upsetting day yesterday. Indictments everywhere. Will there be convictions? How strong is the case? We'll try to get the answers to some of that stuff right now with our legal analyst from Martin Harding and Mazzotti, Chaz Farcher. Hey, Chaz, how are you? Hey, Chaz. Good morning, Chuck. Good morning, Diane. Hey, so, I mean, let me just ask a general question. Uh, what was your immediate reaction to this? I mean, this is, this is bombshell-type stuff. That's exactly right. I mean, it's a huge indictment. It's an 80-page 80, 80 uh, complaint, you know, with 30-plus charges against 10 different people. So, I mean, you're right. It's, it's definitely bombshell-type stuff. I mean, it's bigger than, in my mind, the, you know, the Silver case or the Skelos case that we just had, uh, you know, a, a year or two ago. Now, I know, I mean, everything looks, uh, you know, the defense hasn't even responded yet. But, I mean, do you think from what you see on the face of it, does pre the federal prosecutors, it seems like they have a lot of ammo here to go after these people. Yeah, I think so, you know, and they've obviously been successful in the past, putting the Joe Bruno case aside where, where the convictions were returned an appeal, you know, with the Silver conviction and the Steelers conviction, and here it looks like there's quite a bit, and it's not just, um, you know, uh, the appearance of impropriety or some self-dealing. It almost looks like here, you, you, if the allegations are true, you've got essentially quid pro quo bribery, which, uh, you know, is really what you need now under the new Court of Appeals uh, interpretation of these laws. Chaz, there's also a question about how strong uh, their main witness is in this. Todd Howe, former aide to Cuomo, he uh, is not listed in the indictment because he's already working with them, right? He's already pleaded guilty. But already we're hearing, I think it's Prococo's uh, lawyer who said he's not a very credible witness. Does that strike you as true? Well, whenever you're dealing with somebody, whenever you have a witness who's already cut a deal, you know, I mean, there's going to be material there that you can use to impeach that person or to attack that person's credibility. I mean, that person now has something to gain. You know, you're willing to, to turn on the people around you and talk about what they've done because you've cut a deal with the prosecution. You, know, you have something, you have skin in the game that you're going to do less time. Your sentence is going to be reduced in exchange for that testimony. You'd say anything to save yourself. So there's always that part of it. But the information that will probably come from someone like Todd Howe, you know, it, it is only going to go to greatly strengthen the case. And if prosecutors didn't think it would, I don't think they would have offered him a deal. You mentioned kind of the new look, uh, you know, under the law at prid, you know, quid pro quo, uh, you, you know, something for something. Um, the Supreme Court made a ruling uh, this year in the involving the Virginia governor, which is actually keeping Silver and Skelos out of jail right now. You know, regarding malfeasance in office and bribery, do you think do you see that playing into this case now? You know, the Preparari yesterday was kind of. He was noncommittal. He goes, he's not in the business of, you know, uh, evaluating at this time, you know, U.S. Supreme Court rulings. However, he said, we read these things and we still think we got a good case. Yeah, they absolutely have to take that into account. You know, the, the first real, uh, well, not the first, but the, the, you know, one of the more recent honest theft of honest service law convictions was the Joe Bruno case. Right. That was before you had the first Supreme Court case that came down that narrowed that law. That was U.S. v. Skilling. It, before skilling, you could convict someone based upon the appearance of impropriety or self-dealing. So it was a very broad law. It was much easier for prosecutors to get a conviction. The Supreme Court struck that part of it. It required that you had quid pro quo, a direct exchange, money for something else, for a favor, for something. And now, just recently in 2016, the Supreme Court has gone further and narrowed that law a little bit more. Now, not only do you need uh, quid pro quo, but it also has to be an exchange for a specific official act is the word we're looking at now. So what does that mean? That means you used to be able to say quid pro quo. Well, he paid him $100,000 and turned this politician set up meet with key people. Setting up meetings, making introductions is not enough anymore. Now you've got to show money in exchange for contracts, money in exchange for bid rigging. So it's a much more direct uh, piece of evidence that's needed that makes the conviction stronger. But if the allegations are true, I think it may be there. And Chaz, let me give you uh, one more quick thing. Just legally speaking, the, the, the state attorney general also had its own indictments, basically involving Caliero, SUNY Poly, and a big time, you know, local developer, uh, Joe Nicola. Now, how do these, how does a federal case and the state cases, how do they work together? Are they completely separate? Do they overlap? Uh, they're, they're separate cases, but they're going to work together on these cases. The evidence will be overlapping, you know, and some of the charges are better suited for state prosecution for the attorney general, whereas uh, you know, the federal corruption charges have got to be handled by the feds. Uh, you know, but the, the charges against um, Lieros, specifically that alleged that there was contracts out there, and, you know, essentially he 
designed the system so all of these developers who might have put in bids to obtain these lucrative contracts, it was really never going to go to one. It was a preordained result there, you know, and, and it wasn't a fair part of the process. In exchange, uh, you know, SUNY would receive millions of dollars in donations and loans and other things from these contractors, which in turn would personally benefit him. The two cases will overlap. The prosecutors will certainly work together, share evidence, share information, and if and when one or two of these people start to fold, I'm sure they'll be required to, to participate and, and help them bring the other cases to a resolution as well. Fascinating stuff, uh, very disturbing, and I know we'll talk to you again about this stuff uh, as it progresses. Chas Farcher, our legal analyst from Martin Harding and Mazzotti. Thanks, Chas. Have a great day, Chuck. Have a great day, Diane.